Yo, yo, what's up, people? What's up? What's up? It's your boy, Black Jesus, right here with the If You Won't Say It, I Will podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening. This is going to be brought to you by Black Jesus, which is myself, and my co-host, Young Males, a.k.a. Mellow, who's not going to be here today, but going forward, he will. Today, let's talk about... What are we going to talk about? Let's see. What, what What's in the world right now that's crazy that people are biting their tongue? See, over here, we don't bite our tongue, and we're going to say what you think and you scared to say. Why? Because at the end of the day, you are conforming to what society wants you to do, and we don't conform to anything but the clothes we put on. Let's get it. So first, let's talk about this uh, all-star game and these picks. I mean, golly. Who in their white mind chose first? Oh, 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 oh. I know who chose first. It was Steph Curry. But was he literally in his right mind when he made these picks? I mean, come on. I mean, you see Steph Curry's uh, team, and then you look at LeBron's team, and it's like two totally different atmospheres. We're, we're, We're talking about JV and varsity here. We're talking about high school and college. We're talking about the pros and shoot what? D2. That's what we're talking about here. We're not just talking about basketball players. We're talking about something is going on. And if you won't say it, I will. Because there's no place in this earth for a person to pick the people that this guy chose to get. Now, mind you, this is really looking like a East versus West when it comes to level of content and level of players. And you're probably saying, what do you mean by that? I mean this. We all know the West has the best teams. We know that. We know in the East, 9 times out of 10, any team LeBron is on, is going to the playoffs and they're going to potentially contend for a championship. Why? Because the East is so lame when it comes to their players. And, you know, these people need to test their uh, 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 test their skills out and start coming over here to the West. Pretty soon it's just going to be one conference. It's just going to be NBA. It's not going to be multiple conferences. For what? You know? For what? There's no reason for it. You know? So let's go ahead and go over uh, these teams real quick and go over these players and let's really, really dig into what the hell was Steph Curry thinking about? So, you know, what was Steph Curry thinking about when he chose, who did he choose first? I don't know. Did he choose Giannis uh, at the uh, Kempo first? I mean, who did he, who did he pick? Uh, it makes no sense. But the one good thing is the All-Star game will be uh, in the West, you know, in L.A., where it's had a lot of success in the past. So that's a good thing. I'm thinking about taking a trip out there to, um, you know, show some support and, and to see what's going on. Uh, I will not be um, spending my money for a ticket to watch these guys um, BS for three quarters and then, you know, turn it up for the last five minutes. I'm cool. But I will go out there and party and kick with the stars. Um, So here we go. Looking here at Team Steph Curry. He has Giannis. He has Jimmy Butler. Okay. No, Jimmy Butler. Giannis. Okay. I can see Giannis. Someone you would want to put in an all-star game. Jimmy Butler. Hmm. Not too sure about an all-star game because he's not an all-star type of player of what the all-stars have become. Now, if you're talking about someone to go out there and just play hard nose, works hard, Jimmy Butler all day. But as far as if you're trying to fill the seats up, I'm not too keen on Jimmy Butler. Now, as far as the type of basketball player I am, I love Jimmy Butler. Love him. Because I'm the type of player that likes to bring it on both sides of the court. Not too flashy. You know, minimal shots for maximum output. We got DeMar DeRozan, West West, y'all. Of course he's going to be on that. You got Joel Embiid, 
you know, salute to him on his first All-Star Game selection. We got Draymond Green, of course. He's going to be on there. Love the way Draymond Green plays. We got James Harden. Al Horford. Now, Al Horford is like the type of guy when it comes to an All-Star Game. Because of the way the game is going to be played, he's probably someone you would pick last. He's like that last type of player. That doesn't mean that he's not talented. That just means the way that he plays is really not... Uh, how can I say this without fudge it? I'm not going to worry about it. He's just not the type of player that's going to be exciting to watch. You know, it, 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 it's kind of like Tim Duncan. You can respect everything Tim Duncan does. Best power forward ever to play the game. But at the end of the day, when you're talking about flash and flair and pizzazz, he's not pizzazz, He's not giving that. He's not giving that. Now, when you talk about playoffs, oh, yeah, I want Al Horford. I want him because I know he's going to do what it takes to get the win. He's going to do the dirty work. He's going to do little things. He's going to set those hard screens. He's going to pick and pop. He's going to pick and bro. He's going to talk on defense. He's going to do these things. But when it comes to an all-star game, when there's people shooting threes and dunking, that's not his forte. So I can see him out there being lost in the sauce. Not sure why he got picked unless it was the last pick. Um, who else do we have here? We have Damian Lillard. Of course, West West, y'all, Portland. Definitely an all-star type of player. Uh, he is also a playoff type of player. He's just any type of player. So, of course, you want to get him. Kyle Lowry, um, more of a playoff type of player. Not an all-star type of player to me. Um, not a great shooter. Decent, um, good leader. Um, good point guard when it comes to being a pure point guard. And, uh, you know, he's decent on defense. Hard-nosed guy. Can't sit there and say he's not good. It's just when you come to All-Star, what are you doing when there are so many other people out there? Okay, you got Clay Thompson. Of course, you're going to pick your your uh, your three-point shooting brother. Of course, we're going to take him. No problem. When you're in an All-Star game, you're thinking about dunking and shooting threes. And shooting threes is what he does. And then you have Cat, a.k.a. Carl Anthony Towns. I like this pick due to the simple fact is this guy can do a lot. He can dribble, he can shoot, and he can dunk. He also has a little pizzazz and a little flair to his game that makes it not boring. So I can see that. But when you go to Team LeBron, oh, my God. And I've been saying this for years and years and years, and I'm not going to drift too far off on this, but the league has been trying to put LeBron in the situation to be the greatest. And when I mean how is that, it just seems like, you know, he's getting these players and, you know, one-year contract, two-year contracts, and, you know, all of a sudden, you know, uh, all, all, all of a sudden we have people saying, oh, LeBron gets this, LeBron gets that, LeBron. No, it's not all of a sudden. It's just all of a sudden that people are saying it. He's been getting it. The NBA is putting him in a in a in a position to be the greatest, and that doesn't mean the best. That means the greatest. I mean the accolades and 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 being a face. And when you see when you think of the NBA, you think of who? You thinking of this player right now? And they're doing that do solely on the fact is they need to have someone to pass the torch to. Okay. You know he's outspoken in certain instances, which I definitely respect. Um, a lot more so than Michael Jordan. We won't get into that. This will be a whole other story. But, matter of fact, let's just get off of that now. Um, but when you look at his team, oh, my God. Now, you look at LaMarcus Aldridge, okay? I'd rather have LaMarcus Aldridge over Al Harford and Carl Anthony Towns, okay? Now, you're talking about Bradley Bill. I'd rather have Bradley Bill. Now, once again, we're talking about All-Star game. I'd rather have Bradley Bill over Jimmy Butler and Kyle Lowry, okay? DeMarcus Cousins, all-star game. I'd rather have DeMarcus Cousins over Al Horford and Carl Anthony Towns, okay? Now, Anthony Davis. I'd rather have Anthony Davis over Joel Embiid, Al Horford, and Carl Anthony Towns. Kevin Durant. I'd rather have Kevin Durant over Giannis. Jimmy Butler, DeRozan, 
Draymond. Uh, Clay Thompson. Kyle Lowry. And Carl Anthony Towns. The only players that I can say that I may slightly give the nod would be... Uh, who we got here? Would probably be James Harden and Dame Lillard. Dame Lily. Them the only two. Uh, let's see here. Who we got? Kyrie Irving. I'd rather have Kyrie Irving than Jimmy Butler. DeMar DeRozan. Mm. Uh, Kyle Lowry. I'm kind of torn on Dame Lillard. Uh, Dame Lillard is just going to get it done. He's not going to be too flashy. He's going to give you a little flash of his ass, but he's just going to go out there and bust your ass. That's just what he's going to do. Um, so I'm kind of on the fence on that one. Clay Thompson uh, is just a knockdown shooter. So once again, when it comes to all-star type of play, you need those threes, but then you also need that flash. You remember what uh, Kyrie Irving did to, what was that guy's name? Uh, man, I don't know why I can't think of his name right now. I know he got baptized by uh, DeAndre Jordan as well. I can't think of the guy, the kid's name right now. But you remember what he did to him in the Rocket Stars Challenge. I think he made him fall twice. You know. So we know his handles are there. Kevin Love, a player that doesn't get the respect that he deserves. Um, Kevin Love can do a lot. He definitely can shoot very well for a big guy. So as far as the All-Star game, I'm taking him over Joel Embiid. I'm taking him over Al Horford. I'm taking him over Carl Anthony Towns. Okay? Victor Oladipo. Mm. I'll keep I'll keep uh, everyone on Steph's team over Victor Oladipo. Porzingis. Yeah, once again, we're talking about All-Star. I want to keep putting this in your head. So that way you don't say, Black Jesus, you're a trap. And what type of basketball are you watching? Once again, we're talking about All-Star game. All right? So, Porzingis, I'm taking him over. Joel Embiid. I'm taking him over Al Horford. I'm taking him over Carl Anthony Towns. He brings a lot more to the table as far as uh, his skill set. He showed me a lot more. So, I'm going to go off of that. John Wall, point guard, extremely quick. Can also get up there and dunk with the best of them. I'm taking John Wall over Kyle Lowry. I'm taking him over Jimmy Butler. And that's about it. Russell Westbrook. I'm taking Russell Westbrook over everybody on this team except no everyone maybe even Steph Curry okay now they're giving LeBron who right now is having an off year and I say that and it's crazy because his numbers are extremely high but we're talking about when it comes to LeBron he's, he preaches team 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 so it's not about his numbers it's about what his team is doing and right now, his team's not doing too well. Even on the East, with that record on the West, he would be, you know, 6 7 C right now since he's on the East. Gets a pass. You know, hopefully they get it together, is what people will say when it gets closer to the playoffs. So they need something right now to get him back in contention of being spoken about. We need to right now get the spotlight back on him in a positive light. So what do they do? Somehow, some way, he gets all of these great players. Now, is that taking any of the blame off Steph? No, it's not. Because at the end of the day, Steph had to make those uh, had to make those picks. He shouldn't have made those picks. I mean, what is he thinking? What was he on? Was was he? What, I don't know what's going on with this guy. I don't get it. I mean, when you look at these people across the board, you're like, wow, what's going on, guy? You know. It makes no freaking sense. But we'll see how it goes. One thing I do like, I do like those new jerseys. The jerseys are looking excellent, exquisite. But once again, when I talk about jerseys, we are talking about 
the actual team and LeBron being in a position to where he is going to be spoken about again. Because right now, the only thing they're saying about him is how sorry his team is. This is something that happens quite often. And you know the first person that they're pointing a the finger at. Kevin Love. Second person they're pointing a the finger at. Teron Lu. Now mind you. Everyone knows LeBron is the GM. LeBron is the coach. And he almost is the owner. He makes these teams. He puts them together. He does all of this stuff. So why is he not taking any of the blame? Because they don't want him to. There has to be a scapegoat. And a scapegoat is Kevin Love. Teron Lu. These are the scapegoats. Now I'm telling you that to say this. It's not Kevin Love's part. It's not Teron Lu's part. You say, it is Kevin Love's fault. He's not doing nothing. Of course he's not doing nothing. He's not getting a damn ball. Think about it. When he played for the Timberwolves, he was pretty much the best power forward behind uh, Tim Duncan. Best power forward in the league. Won a three-point contest. This guy, this great player. All of a sudden, he comes to the Cavs, and he's not having the same success. You have to say why. He's not having the success because he's not getting the ball. Everyone knows in order to score, you have to get the ball. And they're saying, oh, well, why doesn't he rebound? Watch their basketball sets. And for people that don't know what sets are, those are how they start their plays. They have a spread offense, which means Kevin Love, for offensive purposes, is is at the uh, three-point line. He is sitting at the three-point line. He is keeping the game spread. You're saying, well, why would he do that? Because LeBron is not a great shooter. Majority of the time LeBron gets the ball, he's looking to drive, maybe get a little little floater. He's not a great post-up player. We know that. We've been saying that. So what do you do? You take away from other people's strengths to make him better. That's the thing. So these people blaming Kevin Love for the reason why the Cavs suck is once again a scapegoat. Scapegoat for the great LeBron. You can't sit there and expect a guy to give you 20, 30 points to where you're not putting him in position to be successful. If LeBron knew how to shoot better, it'd be different. Guaranteed. But he doesn't. So it's not. Now, before you say black Jesus, why do they have those sets? Why isn't the coach changing it up? If you remember, I just told you who the coach was. I told you who the GM was. Every year they're trying to make LeBron happy at the cost of their own. And I have to say it again, at the cost of their own integrity of how they want to play the game. So while they're sitting there drawing up plays, they have to understand if LeBron doesn't like it, they're not going to do it. And if, Le- and, if they, and if LeBron doesn't like it and they don't do it, guess what's going to happen? They're scared that LeBron's going to jet out of there. At the end of the day, who fills the seats, right? Is it the coach or is it the players? So as an owner... Unfortunately, they look at it in that nature. Okay? Who we got to make happy? They're not looking at, let's make it to where we put our team 
in the best position to be successful. We're going to put our team in the best position to make LeBron happy. And then when we lose, we're going to fire the coach. Then when we lose, we're going to allow everyone to blame the players. And then when we lose, we're going to sit there and wonder why. And then when we lose, we're going to have to worry about if, if LeBron is going to leave. He hasn't re-signed, ladies and gentlemen. He hasn't re-signed. He had ample time to. People got on Kevin Love when he didn't re-sign at an early time. You got LeBron going to L.A., buying houses in L.A. You got LeBron going to private schools, checking out those private schools. So at this time, you can see what's happening here, ladies and gentlemen. You can see what's going on. But still, again, instead of them looking to make sure that their team is in the best position to be successful. They're still trying to do things to keep LeBron happy, which in turn is going to lead to two things. Them making it to the finals and them losing. And then they're going to blame it on someone else. You see Kyrie got out of there. There's things that go on behind the closed doors, ladies and gentlemen, that we don't know nothing about. So when stuff like that starts to happen, you have to start thinking about it. You have to use your antennas. Why would someone want to be so adamant in leaving? It's a circus. So in order to bring the circus back down, to bring the spotlight back on LeBron. They put him in a position to where he has the best team because they need him, the face of the NBA, to be back in the good graces of the people. Now think about it. LeBron's team has already been losing. He goes to the NBA All-Star game. He picks his own team. He gets pummeled. We're going to come back to what's going on with LeBron. How many more years do LeBron have? Is LeBron already on his way out? These are what the headlines read, ladies and gentlemen. So they have to do something. It's called damage control. And they have to bring them back around. And that's what's going on. Right now, it's coming back around. And LeBron and his team not only are going to have a great win, LeBron is going to do great. This is going to get them jump started back. This is what it's going to do. That's enough about this guy. Let's talk about what's going to happen after the All-Star game. After the All-Star game, we're going to be right back here, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be talking about the All-Star game. Who did good? Who didn't? Do they even have a dunk contest this year? I haven't even thought about that. That's something I need to look into. That's probably what I'm going to do with my next, my next segment on the dunk contest and how it's became lame over the course of the last couple of years because of the lack of competitiveness that we have in people these days. If you're not getting paid extra for it, if you don't have to do it, they're not doing it. They'd rather hang out, pop a couple bottles, what they call it, and go from there. 
I appreciate you for listening. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, please leave them below. Also, subscribe. Tell your friend. Tell your mom. Tell your kin. We are here. And once again, give me a like, a thumbs up, please. I appreciate you for taking the time to listen to this segment of What You Won't Say I Will. Have a good day.